another episode called Africans Africans Living Living Abroad. Abroad. I am your girl Msindos and as usual, I'm not alone. I'm with my girl. I hope you guys enjoyed our first show. This is actually our second. It's also very, very interesting. Again, today we're going to talk about culture shock, what we found when we landed abroad. So, uh, yes, we are in the UK and obviously other people are in different countries. We would also like to hear your own culture shock. So, Tenjiwe, what was your own? Uh, Hello, beautiful people. Uh, Well... Coming abroad, <coughs> very exciting, very interesting, new experience, new country, and obviously new cultures. Yep. And uh, for me, coming from a, a country that was colonized by the Brits, mm-hmm. I thought coming to England was going to be easy, that everything they had taught us was exactly what they were doing here. I thought it would be just easy to do things that I was taught, because we basically, we've lost 70% of our culture into what they have brought us up to believe Mm -hmm. is the right thing to do things, is the right way to do things. But when I came here, I was quickly surprised by quite a lot of things. Uh, One of the biggest ones was that uh, we knew English people to be ladies and gentlemen. Yes. And then I came here. <laughs> what did the you find? The swearing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. The swearing was, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you there. Yeah. Which is the same also in America. It's like the swearing. Even when it comes to their comedy, the punchline, mm-hmm. the swear word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They don't go to the shop. They go to the effing shop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everything, every sentence is followed by a vulgar everything they have to swear and it actually became um we got used to it at first it was a shock literally Mm -hmm. like what these people are swearing because where we come from you don't you don't swear there are certain people that swear even if you do swear as a kid you they go and tell yeah and then you'll be in trouble right because we grew up thinking like every british person or every person from overseas behaves like the queen speaks like the queen walks like the queen dresses like the queen and the, 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 then you come here, and it becomes quite a shock. Yeah, and uh, all these things you've been told, they're not, they're not real. Now you come to realize, hold on a minute, so everything that I've been taught is actually a lie, you know, because these people, they just don't care. You know, what I found out in this country is that you live your own life. You can have a neighbor for 15 years. You don't know her name. You don't know the kids' names. You don't know anything about them. But the funny thing, the funny thing is, in summer, she can easily say good morning to you because of the weather, right? But because it's cold for nine months, so people mind their own business, you do your own job, come home, you don't care. Which I actually, to be honest, I really enjoy being on my own, doing my own thing, because nobody cares what you're wearing, nobody cares, you know, no one cares. So for me, it was a culture shock, but I that I accepted. But then again, it's got its own downfalls, because what if something goes wrong? You can't go to your neighbor and say, oh, listen, I'm in trouble, or something like that. So for me, that was a, a, like a big one. I found that also very shocking, that you do not speak to your neighbors, You try and greet people and they look at you like, is there something wrong? Even when you go to a bus stop, we're so used to, you greet people that you find there. Yeah. And here, they don't do that. Like, I don't know my neighbors. I met, uh, not met because I already knew them, but we just don't talk. I don't Mm. know their name. They don't know my name. Uh, We just pass each other in 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 the hallway. We pass each other at the entrance door. I live in an apartment. And I do not know my neighbors. And funny enough, last week, uh, we had a fire in our building. One of the apartments uh, caught fire. And it was the first time I spoke to most of my neighbors. Wow. And I've had that apartment for 11 years now. Wow. We just do not speak to each other. Sometimes if you have, you have children that are the same age, mm. children will we, we, we become we, friends. You're most play, likely yeah. to speak to people yeah. that have children, that are friends with your children. That's why people even will have dogs. I remember even during lockdown, because mm-hmm. we were all like on lockdown as it happened around the world. Everyone understands what was going on. Mm-hmm. People would buy dogs just so that 
they will have someone to speak to because people will talk to you if you have a dog, if you're walking a dog, but they're not talking to you. They're talking to the dog or talking about the dog. That's they're not going to ask you how you are doing, yep. but the dog. And also, sometimes you just want to go and ask your neighbor for salt. Yeah, exactly. Some, you can yeah. run out of tea bags. You can't go and ask your neighbor. Yes, I think that's why there's a lot of depression in this country because people don't talk, they don't share anything. If their neighbor, if if their family members, they're not talking to each other, they don't have anyone. Obviously, you can talk to a, a dog, but how far can you go with a dog? You know, sometimes you need to come out in Africa. You come out, the, there's no food, but you can go to your neighbor and says, "Can I have onions? Can I have this?" And you can have a meal for your children. Here, it's it's definitely a no no. That could never happen. That would never happen. It would never happen. And uh, at least if you in America, especially in the ghetto, they might not be friendly, but at least they will fight. There's some action between <laughs> the neighbors. Yes, you know, yeah. And they know each other's names, right? You know, it's not that bad. But, but in other countries, it's just like, mind your own business. Another thing that I found that was really crazy for me was um, elderly people being kept in care homes. Oh, I found that as a shocker because it's not a, a culture that we do. Uh, we look after our own elderly. We do. It is very taboo uh, to send your elderly to a nursing home. Yeah, what is that? A residential home. What is that? People but it's good because it creates jobs. And it's good. It's good. It's good in a way. But I think it's the system, and it's it's. I think I would call it their culture because you know they know that at a certain age they can have a meeting and say maybe especially when they're not well you know some of them they've got dementia they've got so, so many things going on with them then they make a decision that they will take their parents to a nursing home and then they can sell a house and stuff like that so it's not a taboo for them but it is for us because it's not something that you can discuss with your family can you imagine telling abomination. your grandparents the abomination i'm telling you can you imagine going telling your parents saying that oh listen we need to talk we have a meeting i think oh. it's time <laughs> The pastor will hear about this. <laughs> Definitely. You, you, you will need a prayer. The neighbors will know. There will be a prayer dedicated to you. <laughs> exactly. So for me, that was a culture shock because I, 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 I didn't see them at anywhere. And I was like, what's going on? And then if you do find one, she lives alone. You know, and she's so lonely. Those are the only people that can actually talk to you because now I understand why they're very lonely. So when they come outside, they get that contact with another human. They want to interact, yes. you know. So that's why I'm like, oh, okay. And then as I was here a bit longer, I'm like, oh, now I understand. But it was really, it was, it was, it's still going on. It's something that happens. And then they're not shy to say that, oh, my son left um, my house when she, when he was um, 15. Mm. It's normal for them. For us, at 15, you're a baby. Even at 21, you're still a baby. At 45. At 45, they're, they're old men who are still staying. If your parents are alive, you are a baby. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Some people back home, they would get married and come back and live at home with their, with their extended family members. And some people get married not because they want to live with a wife, but because they're looking for a wife to look after. To look parents. after, exactly. And I think that's why also you find a lot of uh, Africans working in the care Mm -hmm. industry mm -hmm. uh, because this is something we do for free at home exactly. i look after my neighbor for free exactly i look after my family members for free so if you're paying me for it mm -hmm. why not i'm definitely doing it. exactly yeah and also with um another culture shock that i found was um seeing why people doing normal jobs you know um when i remember uh, i took a picture actually i was so shocked to see a white guy taking the bean outside my house I was like, Mom, come and have a look at this. You know what? A, a, a white guy, you know? Mom, we were shocked. We were all shocked because we never knew that uh, white people can actually do normal jobs. We thought, as South Africans, that that's only for us black people. That's, uh, uh, that's a mentality that we were brought up with. You just I remember when I first, well, not first took my son, but he was at, uh, I think he was about eight at the time, mm -hmm. and we were sitting in one of the restaurants, in Mklanga, mm -hmm. one of the affluent areas in South Africa, in Durban. And he just looked around, and he asked, and he was a child, so he asked out loud, mm -hmm. is there anything wrong with it? He's like, in South Africa, how come all the white people are just shopping or eating, and it's only black people who are working? Because uh, in the shops, it is black people who are serving, who are working, 
uh, in restaurants, it's black people. In the mall, it's black people who are mm-hmm. cleaning. Mm-hmm. And white people are just out there spending money. Yeah. And it is a shock for us when we come here and you see, like, white people yeah. serving you. They're babysitters. They're they, 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 they maids. They're they, 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 they housekeepers. And they do it with pride, they too. Do, yes. They was, they, they, they were actually, there's a lady that I, I know that she was so proud. She's in her maybe 60s now. She used to tell me, Cindy, oh, I love my job. I've been a cleaner for over 20 years, and I love it, you know? Something that at home, it's something that is a bit embarrassing for some that you clean people's houses, of which it's something that um, our parents and grandparents did that, and it was normal for them, but the kids would be ashamed I to think, say. I think the difference also is how much you get paid, because here you could be doing those jobs, but you can still afford a decent uh, place to live. You can Absolutely. afford to drive a car. You you don't feel like yeah because there's minimum wage you can't just be you can you have to earn a certain amount and sometimes you can work with rich people they would bless you and you know it makes a lot of people prefer to like leave their professions in Africa and come here mm. and do certain jobs because they're like I could be I'm working in Africa say as a, a nurse mm-hmm. as a doctor or in an office I'm earning. Uh, 200 pounds a month and I come here uh-huh. I'm going to work looking after old people I'm earning 800 pounds a, a week. week exactly and that's a lot of money that is actually a lot of money but then again uh, this is a this is something that people back home who are uh, thinking of coming here they need to understand as much as that sounds like a lot but in theory when is time to really because you have to think of your rent you have to think, especially if you're going private, okay? You can get a council flat, but then if you're working, you wouldn't want a council flat. And also getting a council flat is another conversation on its own. And exactly. You need to be uh, of a certain immigration status. It's not just for everyone. But uh, that's another culture shock. Exactly. Price, the cost of living. Cost of living. The it, rent here yeah. is expensive. Expensive. It's very expensive. I mean, the the rent that some people are paying, they can have a house in the suburbs of Mtlanga. Yeah, and you're paying for a room. You're paying for a, a room. Or you're paying for a one-bedroom house. Mm. Flat. A, lo- a flat, even. No you don't have no garden. You don't have... And you have a neighbor downstairs. Mm. And when know? I came here, I had moved from America, so I was used to seeing... Americans do everything large. Yes. Everything yes, is I've big. seen that, yeah. That's why I was so disappointed when I dated an American man. I thought, I thought you had everything <laughs> big, but what happened to you? <laughs> so it wasn't, it wasn't what you expected. It's just the cars, the houses, <laughs> the meals at McDonald's. When it comes to the men, we'll leave that for <laughs> another day. Oh, well, when they do say uh, uh, African Americans, they, 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 they're blessed. So they say, I don't know, but that's what they say. I got the wrong one then. <laughs> so weird. I need that. I needed a therapy after that. Because, you know, after, after being with him, I couldn't use toothpicks anymore because they reminded me of him. But let's just continue with <laughs> our topic. Stop it. <laughs> okay, so what else was a culture shock for you? Uh, what else? Religion. Mm-hmm. I came here. I thought these people brought us Christianity. Mm-hmm. So they must be going to church every day. There are more pubs than churches. Some of the churches have been turned into restaurants or pubs. There's a church near my house that has been ch- t- uh, turned into a restaurant because nobody goes to church. Mm-hmm. And even when you do go to church, because I remember uh, I went to church. The reason I went to church was because um, I wanted my son to go to uh, a religious school mm-hmm. because they... I was told they were better. Yeah. yeah. They tend to be better. Uh, listen, I went for two weeks. I mm. couldn't go. Why? Church is boring. <laughs> what kind of church was that? Because um, Church of England. Okay, that's why I, I find it boring. Me. That's why I find it boring because there are, there are churches out there, especially Africans, Caribbeans, there are churches are Pentecostal and they... But those are African churches. They are African, African churches. Who've, who've taken yeah. their culture and brought and it And brought here. it, exactly. Because they couldn't cope. Yeah, and and speaking of churches, also, mm. uh, I think this we, we will relate. The church number one, the service. If it starts at nine, it finishes at ten. It will start at nine and finish at ten. That's it. Whereas where I come from, you are at church until the Holy Ghost <laughs> decides to leave the building. You could start at ten, 
a.m. and leave at 4 p.m. Exactly. And you can't, you, can't, you can't go anywhere. You have to stay. You have to respect. It's a church. They don't speak in tongues. I'm like, who taught us to do that? <laughs> I don't know. That's another subject. You know, when it comes to religion, it's crazy because, as you said, these people, they brought Christianity to all of us. And we as Africans, especially black people, not just them Africans, we tend to understand religion more than they do. And we've, trans we've, we've translated to what we want to believe. And when you do tell them these days that it's not true, some of the stuff here is not true. And they Jesus is not white. You know, they can kill you if they hear. Black people yeah. will be upset if you tell them that Jesus is not white. They drink at church. I remember I, I used to have a job where I worked in a, a, a restaurant mm. and sometimes we'd have to serve alcohol. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, a, a, a nun mm -hmm. and a priest... Mm -hmm. They, they came in and they ordered beer. <laughs> I went to tell my manager, these people want to get me fired. <laughs> me, serving religious people, alcohol. <laughs> I didn't know that drinking here is such an open culture. Yeah, yeah. Even uh, when I, I used to work in, in the office, Fridays, like everyone looks forward to Friday. Yeah, not even that. I was shocked. My my tutor actually lunchtime. If you want to find him, you find him in the pub because he's having a pint. Mm. I'm like, what? And it's I'm talking about Monday. It's not like it's a Friday. Mm. No Monday. Where is his Mister So and So in that pub across yeah, pubs the road? Are open at seven a.m. People like, are already queuing up. I was like, what is this? They what drink is before this? They go to work. And also another one was students. Asking their teacher to stop. They need a break to go outside and smoke. Yeah. I was like, oh, what? What are you guys talking about? Yeah, we need a break. We need to smoke. You know, the disrespect, something I've never seen as a student. It's the disrespect for you. For me, that's what I'm saying. Me as a student from Africa, seeing a child saying, no, 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 sir, you need to stop. Are you even lucky they call you sir and because your name most of the time? They call them by name. By their names, that. exactly. That we need to stop. We need a break. It's a smoking area. Like they, they sent, there was a smoking area before they banned smoking mm -hmm. indoors. There was always a smoking in area schools. in schools, colleges, and everywhere. They call their mothers by name. They yep. call their aunties. Yeah, it's it's like whoa, this is and it's very strange when you see a um a white person because some of them they can come and say call you auntie and it's like wow they've learned they've learned yes you can't you call just call mother, me by my name yeah your mother in law by name someone old your grandmother someone same age as your grandmother you call them by their names it's so strange I actually find that strange even now I I really I can't I can't I, I know I used to have a friend called Matilda she was in her nineties. And she just wanted me to call her by her name. Mm. But Matilda was cool, though. She had a tattoo that said forever, <laughs> 21. <laughs> she was cool, eh? Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's she, nice. She was my friend. May her soul uh, rest in peace. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, and uh, when it comes to jobs, what was the strangest job that you've ever done here? Strangest job that I've ever done here? Something that you don't think would be a paying job back home. Mm. I'm trying to think. I've never done cleaning jobs. I would have found That's it not very strange. strange. People it's do that strange. everywhere. Okay, for uh, example, for me, I used to be a funeral crier. Oh God! Well, no, sorry, no. I've never done that. I've never it's done crazy. any of that crazy stuff. I'll, I'll introduce you to. No, thanks. Know. I'm okay, girl. I'm good. <laughs> Forty pounds an hour. What? You just go there and cry? Yeah, because some people have had too much Botox, they can no longer cry. So the is that yeah. real? I've it's, seen that in real. movies. You can Google it. No, stop it. It's Are you true. serious? Yes. I don't you believe you. You cry on their behalf. No. <laughs> really? Okay, show me. 40 pounds? Yeah, I'll show you. Okay, I'm very sensitive and anyway. You I know, cry all the COVID, time. It was paying even more because people were stuck abroad and their parents would be dying and they want you to go on their behalf. You just go cry and lay flowers and you get your 40 pounds. But I got fired because I overcried. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so when, when did you get this ad? Where are the advertising? I'll based? show you. It's are you serious? Anyone can Google it. Wow. Yeah, that is mad. Funeral cryers. Oh like my God. <laughs> Do you know what? I heard about it, but I never thought it was real. I thought it was just in the movies. No, no, no. It's real? It's a real job. Wow. But I, we don't want people leaving their countries in Africa thinking they're going to come here and just apply for those jobs. You can, though. Why not? 40 oh pounds an God. hour. So that's your job, just crying yeah. all the time. The problem was I overcried. <laughs>
<laughs> Were you, are you giving time limit that you have to cry for this long or you just cry? Yeah. You, there, there, there are levels to it. You can be a funeral mourner. You just go there just to make the room feel warm. <laughs> and sometimes if it's a businessman, they just want to make it feel, have diversity. Like okay. he knew some black people. So you just get paid for appearance. <laughs> Okay, I believe you, girl. I believe you. Okay, I believe guys, you. Guys, if you if you are listening to this, just Google it. <laughs> okay, okay. Please, guys, let us know I'm, I'm if you've done it before or you've seen it, or just let us know. We'd like to find out. I'm so grateful for Uncle Google. Just Google it. <laughs> Funeral. There are different agencies that do it. Really? But so th- me, they said, "Ah, you and now you over cry." I, I wanted to throw myself in the grave because I was counting the money. Okay, if, if you if you overcry, there's more money, so they didn't want to pay you more. No, no, no. There, there are levels. There's like uh, they sometimes pay for silver. You cry, but just you know, okay, you, you just don't have to have tears. Okay, and then if they pay for gold, they want tears. Yeah, and then for platinum, you must cry proper. Stop it. But for me, I was crying the African way, like when I throw myself in the grave. <laughs> Who stopped you? Who stopped you? The, they the, did. The widow. The, 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 <laughs> she thought I must have had something with her husband. Because she got jealous, absolutely. She's, she was saying, I'm the chief mourner. And I'm, like, I'm at work. <laughs> <laughs> I love my job. <laughs> Send you a girl. Listen, I'm hot. You know how hot this is. You're making it worse for me, honestly. Stop making me laugh. Speaking of funerals. Yeah. Woo. Another culture shock. Okay. Oh my God! Have what you attended happened? Funerals here. I have. Yeah, I have. What, what, what's your what? What do you think of them? Um, they're very dead. Like ugh, funeral death. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, that that uh, that just came if out. If I go to a funeral, <laughs> I would expect them to be dead. No, but I mean, in, I mean, if you compare uh, from where we come from. Our, our funerals, there's something called after tears, yeah? After tears, you know that there's food. You, you can leave your house without eating anything because, you know, after we've buried... And the plate must have seven colors. Listen, we need seven colors. What do you mean by that? We want coleslaw. We want this. We want that. It must look good. The chicken must look good. Everything. And then we've got your alcohol. After tears, that's when you drink. You have a good time. And people can stay until following day if they want to. Yeah. And um, then here, it's just the funeral. Now I know that there are people that are being paid to come and go mm-hmm. for sure, maybe five or six. You don't know. They bury, they go. Usually they will go to a pub. And there are not many people. Like no, there's funeral, never. A big funeral has 30 people. Yeah, that's huge. Exactly. Unless you're a celebrity. You know, other than that, it's just family members. And then that's it. They bury you. And then you go to a pub and there's finger food and then there's pints. And you buy your own drink. It's not like that they've paid for a tab. No. I You're going to buy it for yourself. And then yeah, after that, it's a goodbye. At home, I used to attend funerals just for the food. I remember there was a point where I would, like, you know when it's going to be a good funeral. Mm, mm. Oh, I yeah. By good, I mean good food. Yeah. And <laughs> I would even good wear funeral. a week. Yeah. No, no, no. This is and what then I found. Take it off, put on another week. Go and and that's. <laughs> I was actually shocked when I went back home. Uh, there was a funeral, and then um, a friend of mine was telling me that um, she's going shopping for the funeral. I was like, what? What do you mean? Are you not supposed to grab just black clothes? And she said, no way. That's when she took me. I was shocked. Yeah, you dress up. You have to dress to kill. You have to. Doesn't sound good. Dress, dress to, to kill. kill at a funeral. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're not supposed to kill. But you know, yeah, yeah. I do. I do think we can borrow some of the culture here, especially when it comes to funerals, because most, not all, mm-hmm. most people from abroad, in particular white people, when they die, they living money. Oh yeah, they do. They that. living inheritance. They, yeah, it's, us, it's a thing. It's a thing. It could be an uncle who never worked a day in his oh, life. Oh my god! But we're gonna spend more money. Yeah, but the good thing about South Africa, though, I don't know, but I'm talking more about South Africa because that's what I, I know. But I'm sure other, other African countries, they do have um, funeral covers in South Africa. Everybody, every household, you have to pay something. Well, most of them. Most, well, uh, 
uh, that's what I know. I mean, we've got certain companies that are doing very, very well due to people paying because they want their funeral to be on point. And I remember my mom was telling me that, Cindy, we need to pay cover, blah, 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 because we don't want to be embarrassed, but you know? For me, I don't even agree with that. I think we should have a separate topic on that because I feel like, give me a good life while I'm still alive. Mm. What's the point of me dying from pneumonia because I didn't have any winter clothes and then you're burying me with blankets and yeah, all that these gifts that, that is they send true. people with. And it's, true. Uh, it, it's a long thing. I think that can be a topic on its own. On its own, yes, but absolutely. Yeah, funerals here are boring. Yeah, they, they they are. I mean, I mean, I know some people. Might, in in fact, I know in Ghana they celebrate someone's day. They celebrate oh, they your life, with the and they can actually wait for a year before burying somebody. And I've asked the lady actually. I was like, "Why do you have to wait for so long?" She said, "Oh no, because uh, family members are all over the world, so you have to make sure that somebody's working. They've got enough money. So if you've got five siblings, you have to wait for all of them to have enough money." So that when it's time for the funeral, it's like a party, like proper party. Have you seen their dance when they're holding casket, when, they, when they're moving? Like, God, me, wow. Give me my party when I'm alive. Like, if you've ever bought me flowers when I'm alive, don't buy me flowers when I'm dead. I'm not going to be able to smell. That is true. That's what I told people. I said, listen, you know me. I'm a happy person. If anything happens to me, I don't want people to keep crying, lying, people who didn't like me. Let's have some time. Let's have some fun. Have fun. On my behalf. I don't want fun me. I've been crying for people. Uh, no, no, no. Me, I want people to be happy that, okay, she lived cry. her life. No, I would I would expect my family and close friends to cry, but any Tom, Dick, and Harry, don't bother. I mean, I've been crying for people I don't even know. <laughs> so cry for me, please. <laughs> cry. Okay. What else has been your culture shock? Uh, daylight saving. Right. When I first came here, I was so shocked. Actually, it was in America we I first learned of this, that time changes. Yeah. And also to be in the same country, but different ca- time zones. Like you could be in New York and someone who's in California is on a different time zone. Mm. Like, How is this happening? I'm yeah. in the same country. Yeah, that, that is true. But then America is a, is a huge country. It it's quite big, you know, so I, I'm not surprised that when... It, it's actually funny you should say that because somebody... Because in South Africa, we usually... In Africa, we usually two hours ahead or, or one hour behind. So it's not that bad. But I was actually, like, surprised every time they call me or I call them back home. They're like, what time is it there? Are you guys sleeping or it's days? I'm like, no, actually, just an hour. It's not a big deal. So, yeah, then in, in the, whereas when you're in America, it's a different story. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, they change the clock. Is it twice a year? Twice a year, yes. It's, bef- it's summertime and the beginning of winter. They like move the clock forward, move the clock backward. Yeah. And also the extreme weather conditions, like <sighs> in the summer. Like I'm sweating now. Listen, it's I don't summer. know if you guys can see us right now. We are sweating and it's not a joke. I mean, this is it. It's it's really it's how many degrees? I don't even it's know. Thirty something? Thirty two or something. Today also it's a yellow weather warning. What do call okay, yeah. it's it's amber. It's really hot, yeah. right? Yeah, it's 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 extremely hot. I mean, if we could do this outside, we could because it's just I'm just sweating. Yeah, it, it, it right now I feel like I'm in Nigeria and Ghana at the same time. Oh Jesus, that's how hot it is. Oh my God, it's crazy, absolutely crazy. But then when it gets cold, it does get cold. It, yeah, the weather it, it, gets it, extreme. It, it and, does, and it in does. the winter it gets too dark, too quick. Exactly. 4 p.m. You wake up in the dark, you come home in the dark. 4 p.m., you are done. That was another thing for me. I, I just couldn't believe it. Like, half past three, is, that's changing. I'm like, oh, what's the time? And you know what? At first, you get confused because your brain does not accept what's going on. But as time goes on, you accept it, you know? Mm-hmm. And you always forget that it does get cold and it gets dark uh, late in winter. Mm-hmm. I mean, in summer, like right now, it's going to start getting dark around nine. And when I came here, it was summer, so I used to be like, does it never get dark? It will be 11 p.m. It's still like, I'm like, even God doesn't trust them in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> and then winter comes. Yes, and then you know, you know what's going on. I'm telling you. Another thing was talking about the weather. Here, people always say, when, when I go to Africa, I'm always complaining when I'm there in winter. I'm complaining it's too cold. But you, lived in a, you live in a cold country, been there for so long. Why do you feel it? It's because here we've got something called central heating. When you're indoors, it's hot. 
you can wear a vest and whatever you can wear. You understand, guys, I'm sweating, honestly. You can be fine, but going outside, you need your coat. Mm. You see, you used to watch the movies, you see certain movies, and then the, it's cold, it's, it's, it's snowing outside. As soon as they enter, they take off their coats and hang them. That's not fashion. It's because it's warm indoors. And remember, uh, well, I, well, I come from Durban. We both come from Durban. Yeah. One of the, like in Durban, you have two different weathers. It's either hot or very hot. Yeah. You yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it will be December, which is like in really the middle hot. of our summer. It's oh, hot, yes. Hot, hot. Oh, and yes. And we'll be watching these American TV programs. We'll be Christmas watching time. the superstars wearing their fair coats yes. and boots. And we would think this is what's in style. See us at the beach in the heat. In the heat. Dressing like them. Do you know what? It's true. There was a time when, when the weather changes just a little bit in KZN, you see people wearing boots and scarves and, and roll necks and coats. You're thinking, okay. And they're sweating the way that I'm sweating. But you know what? The wet, because we're so used to the sunshine. So when it turns a little bit, we think it's cold, but it's never cold. So if you're in Africa, you're thinking of coming here. Yes, it is cold. It is true. But indoors, it can be very warm, but right? That's why the bills are high. That's why the bills are high, because it's not free, by the way. You have to pay your bill. You pay for electricity. You pay for, you pay for everything. I remember growing up, uh, they were saying in South Africa, we're not going to pay for anything. Oh, actually, let me just come back to this. There's a time when, because in my township was next to the Indian uh, township, right? So every time we would go there and play, because they had a park. We didn't have a park. So we go to their park. So every time you go there, we'll be like maybe 20 or 30 of us. We keep pointing the house you're going to get as soon as we get our freedom. Like, this is my house. This is my... Which was quite interesting <laughs> because it didn't happen like that. But, you know, it was just the way of us growing up. So, yeah. What was your another culture shock? The law. Number one, the fact that I cannot bribe police. This thing <laughs> breaks my heart. <laughs> That's a no no. What Absolutely kind of, what no. kind of police men and women do not want cold like drink? Cold drink? <laughs> <laughs> For a small, small thing here, you go to jail. Yes. You go to prison. Yes. Small, yes, small thing. Yes. And you, 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 you will be fooled into thinking they, they're not like caring, like you can go in a train, in a tram, there's no one checking that you're really tapping your oyster, that you really. They like, know. Oyster is uh, like this card that you used to, to pay. But that day you get caught. They know. When, when, when they say, okay, my friend, come here. Mm. When they catch you, my friend, everything changes. They know. Because a lot of people, this is another thing, a lot of people always think that they can get away with a lot of things because they think they're not being watched. Mm. But the system abroad is totally different from what we used to. They know everything. You can get away with it for 10 years. But when they catch you, they catch you. Uh, here, bribery doesn't work. You know? And a lot of the things that we have to bribe for back home, here you have to do it straight. For example, driver's license. I remember back home, I just had to show the instructor my cleavage. I got my driver's <laughs> license. <laughs> here you actually have to go for the test. Oh, no, you do. And you can fail five, six times. You have to do it. It's a must. You can't get away. And they won't even, like, they will report you for offering them a bribe. Exactly, exactly. And the law here, the law is the law. There's no there's no thinking about it. Law is the law. Obviously, laws that made to be broken. But also, the law can favor you. Yes. If, if you, like, I, I know with, with work, when I used to be in employment, uh, I found out something that was so interesting. Ah, mm. You get, uh, what do you call this leave where I, I, if uh, you've lost someone in your family? Bereavement. Bereavement, leave. yeah, yeah. Bereavement leave, yeah. As soon as I found out about <laughs> that, every time I got a job, I had an identical twin, and they would die three months later. I, I had a mother, and my mother died like 20 years ago, but she dies every time I get a new job. <laughs> it's not my fault she didn't wait for me to get these jobs with benefits before she died. So I kill her. Every time I got a new job, after two months she dies, I get my two weeks off and get paid. <laughs> Oh God! Okay, that, that's that's true. Let me tell you my culture shock. It is this. It's it eye contact. <gasps> when you're talking to someone in this country, you have to look them look in the, in the eye. In our kind of abomination, it is especially when it's a, it's a person of authority or person who's older than you. Than you, yeah. You, you just cannot look them in the eye. And no. yeah, 
it's a sign of guilt yes. when you do not look you're hiding the something eye. yeah you're hiding something and it's it really it really it's really hard actually it's really really hard because someone who doesn't know especially if you're coming from africa and then someone's just staring while you're talking and thinking this is rude that's so rude or is there something what's going on but it's it's the culture that's how it is and also how they value uh what you call privacy where you, you personal space they call oh it. god yeah I tell you now we do not really yeah there's no space. such thing no there's no such thing i mean no you have to you know, their privacy it, but this is one thing i love about this country you mind your own business your privacy is your own you cannot you know back in africa somebody will not even tell you they are coming they will come with their families and they will overstay maybe for weeks or months they didn't tell you they're coming. You're not prepared for them. You don't have enough food, but they'll come and stay with you. Here. And they bring people. They bring people with them. Here, you cannot bring, you can't come to my house if you're not, you didn't Even tell me. Even for funerals, you get an invite. And exactly. You can't just you knock with. and say, oh, I'm here. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was just passing by. So, you can pass by. You can literally just pass my house without entering. You know it's my house, but because I didn't invite you, you're not coming. How about timekeeping? Oh, my God. Why are they always on time? Time is money, I guess. Time is money. Why you are have always to be, on time? It's just, you can't it, be too early, you can't be too late. I, I, I love it. I live because things do happen if, when you're on time. Things happen. Because imagine when you they have to wait for you. Because have you seen have you seen so many programs on TV like uh, the the housewives or whatever? Usually those ladies are always late, and you know how depressing it is waiting for people for two hours. I, those ladies are five hours late. Oh my god, that's ridiculous! You can't yeah. five hours late, and then you don't you're gonna come in like nothing happened. You know, so I think it's a good thing. I've learned to be on time. I try by all means to be on time. If I'm late, I obviously. I try, but I think uh, I'm engineered in an African way. Like in South Africa, when we say "see you soon." Mm-hmm. It means see you when I see you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. When I say I'm coming now, yeah. it means I'm still sleeping, but soon I will get I'm up. coming, exactly. When we say I'm coming now, now, it means I'm getting ready. <laughs> yes. When we say I'm around the corner, it means now I'm getting in oh the car. Oh my God, it's ridiculous. It's, it's great. But then it's still happening here though with, with, with black people uh, abroad. When there is a, a function, when there is a function, they tend to give the time that is not the correct time. Or they would say, party starts at three. Because they know for a fact that black people will be there at six. But it's bad for those who come on time. It's always the white people who are always there on time. Most of the time. You know, I've learned, I used to be early. I used to be early all the time. But I've learned anything to do with our people, timing, I'm taking my time. But we are early when it comes to work. Work is different. Work is totally different. You have to be on time. That one, no questions asked. But functions, that's when it happens. Socially, we need to So you find that the person organizing the event is not there. She's doing her hair. Yeah. And people are already waiting for you. You're still doing your hair? You didn't know you had a function? It's your party. But then sometimes you find that people who came to, to celebrate with you, they find themselves cooking in the kitchen because you haven't done anything. I don't want to comment too much because it recently happened. <laughs> oh, well, there no, you no, go. No, I, I, I was the guest. Really? I was the guest. You, you ended up in the kitchen. Yeah. Exactly my point. Why does that happen? You've invited people. You've given them the time. But then those people, because when you go to somebody's function, you dress nice, you're smelling good, you just want to sit there and have a glass of champagne, wine, whatever you're drinking. And then, oh, oh please, but the, please, can you go to the kitchen? And then this is not done. Or sometimes they may not even ask you, but you can see they're struggling. You take over because you can't. Some people are coming who are not, you don't want your friends to be embarrassed that they've messed up because it's messing up. It you is. can't invite me and I travel for an hour or two when I get there, nothing is prepared. They still, you're still calling people to bring alcohol. You're still calling people to, nah. I once went to, it was actually a wedding, and it was that chaotic. Mm. And they felt we were being rude when we ordered uh, food elsewhere. Food. Yeah. Exactly. We got Uber Eats. There you go. You're food. hungry because you were told that you, there's food, there's everything. You go there. So that is why it's very important when you're invited somewhere, you eat first. That's very important. 
Because most of the time you'll be so hungry. By the time the function starts, you're so pissed off, you're so upset that you're hungry, and then you end up buying food. I've seen it at weddings as well. Wedding, people going to McDonald's because food is not there or whatever is going on with food. So this is this is something that um, we need to change. That I can, it's timing for me. Everything has to be in order, you know, because sometimes it does happen, of course. I mean, transport, especially here, which uh, was another topic I was going to talk about, um, about transport oh, in this yeah. country. Exactly. Here, you don't need to drive. We don't drive. Yeah, public transport here well, Public is transport is, is really, really reliable, especially if you live in London. You know, we've got underground. We've got buses 24 hours a day. We are, it's, it's really nice because, it, mind you, because people misunderstand. They think you live abroad, so it's equals to you driving. You don't have to. Cars are very cheap here. We can afford them. Anyone can afford a car, but you don't need to, especially if you live in London because it's flexible. And what I've noticed also, it's it's not that expensive, especially compared to the prices back home, mm. to buy a car. But to maintain a car is mm. expensive. To keep a car, yeah. parking is expensive. Mm-hmm. You have to pay for road tax. Mm-hmm. You have, like I said, you can't bribe the police, so you have to do <laughs> Exactly. You, you, you have to do MOT every year. You have to, unless your car is three years old or less, mm-hmm. you, 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 you have to insure your car. It, so it's becoming it's petrol. More it's everything. Expensive. Yeah, there's especially in this in, in where we are in the UK, um, especially in in London specifically because we don't have uh, garages like other people. So you have to park on the streets. Mm. Therefore, you're paying for that. And uh, in most uh, cities, uh, especially in Europe, mm. in most cities, most people who live in the city. Mm-hmm do not necessarily drive. And then there are so many charges. Like you drive here, it's emission zone. It's this yeah, zone, it's, this it's zone. so much, really. I mean, you, unless you really need to. And also public transport is not like back home. It's, uh, I, would st- I wanna say everyone. I know there are people who are gonna say I don't, but most people, mm. it doesn't matter. Like professional people mm-hmm. use public, public transport. transport. People, Absolutely. Like, suit wearing people. Yep. Ministers yep. use yep. public transport. Celebrities use yes, public transport. They do. Doctors use yep. public transport. So yep. it's not something that looked down upon. It's yeah. not something for those who are struggling. Exactly. And also, it's very reliable. It and is. And you get there faster. Exactly. That's the thing, because there's a lot of traffic. There's so lot of traffic. if you're meeting someone in 30 minutes, go underground, you're there in five minutes before, and you've made it because you took public transport. And another um, thing as well, you can meet a celebrity on the ground. Uh, some people have met um, Rihanna. Some people have met Beyonce before Beyonce became like a huge star. So you can, be, especially if you're going to central London where you can go selfridges or you, you're and bound to meet. you can have a good night out. You can drink. You don't need a designated driver. Exactly, exactly. You can drink <laughs> and then you can take... Your, even now it's even better because before you would have to call for a cab. Now on your phone... You just call whatever company you're in. You go home and you're safe. If not, take buses. I remember back in the day where they, when they used to bring um, South African artists uh, somewhere in Stratford in London, that is in East London. So many people that would travel from all over the country, they come there, and when it's time to go home, those who are driving will live outside, they will take their cars, but most of the time you will see them at the bus stop waiting for a night bus, mm-hmm. you know, and it's uh, such a nice thing to see, you know, looking back now, I was like, these girls are cold because it will be freezing outside. They're wearing short skirts and then just small coats that are standing like this, you know, but I mean, because they knew the transport is coming. They knew that they're and safe. They, are, they knew that they'll be home. They're usually night buses. Oh yeah. The night bus. Yeah. Places, yeah. Especially if you live in the city. Yeah. And, and it, it's so, it's so reliable to, 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 to use public transport. You complain if your train is five minutes late. And people use bikes. Yes. A lot. A lot. A lot. Yes, a lot. Yeah, you complain. If if, I, if I'm standing at the bus stop and I've missed one bus, I'm looking, they're saying three minutes. I'm like, oh. I mean, come on, three minutes? That is nothing, but that's just the way it is, you know? So it's it's reliable. It, it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Yes. So what else, girl? What else? Tell me about it. Uh, the languages. Yes. Uh, languages and accents. Yes. Regional accents. I thought all English people spoke the same way. They all sound like the queen. 
and then you come here, no, they do not. Absolutely. You can tell where a person lives, how educated a person is, by the way they speak their English. Exactly. And then the accents are totally different. It, an accent from Manchester, it's one accent I would, don't think I'll ever understand. Have you had a... a, a, a we haven't a even gone person? to Scotland. We just oh, my still here within. I, I, can't, I, I don't understand that language. It's just a different language completely. And it, who, who's this... Um, this girl, she's a celebrity. Um, oh my God, I forgot her name. She was in X Factor. She's from Man- she's from Newcastle. Apparently, she was given. I remember uh, her name soon. So she went to America. She was hired because she, here she was um, a judge, X Factor, I think. And then she, Simon Cow, hired her to go and do the same thing in America. She lost her job because people didn't understand a word she was saying because of the accent. You know, so even in London itself, London accent is different. People from south, they sound different. People from northwest, they sound different. So, yeah. And also different languages. I didn't realize that within the UK, there are different languages. Not only people who come from countries outside the United Kingdom who come and speak their own languages, but also, like, in Wales, they mm. speak Welsh. They, they speak Welsh, yes, that's right. Yeah, that's true. And that's something I didn't know. Yeah. I know it's crazy. Even uh, Scotland, do you understand the, the, the English and Sc- Scottish people? That no. is, I don't, I don't get it. I really don't. Even the Irish, I'm okay with it now. Bef- it used to be kind of like I don't know, but uh, yeah, yeah, languages. And also another thing for it was such a culture shock to see that people from different continents are here and they speak their own languages. Yes, and their kids are speaking their mother tongue language because they they I don't you know it was so fascinating for me to see a an Indian person. I knew more about African countries and other Africans when I moved here. Because mm, in too. Africa we are so divided. Yes. Uh we do not also get taught about other countries. Yep. Especially us being South Africans. I went to school during apartheid during mm-hmm. the Bantu education. So mm-hmm. We really were, Africa was hidden from us. It was, it was, absolutely, it was, it, 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 yeah. They might just believe that. That destroyed us, actually, it really destroyed us, because we believe we were on our own. Yes. This is why we're having a problem right now in South Africa, because people, when they see a black person who's an African, who don't speak a South African language, they assume it's from Nigeria. Yes. They have no idea there's other countries in Africa. Yeah, so I met and I, I got the love for the continent. I started traveling and visiting other African countries because of the Africans I met here. The narrative that we are given at home is mm. all wrong about Absolutely, I agree. Other Africans. And I also love the something that I've been saying. I would write I would like to start from South Africa. Just get to know the continent all the way to the top because it's fascinating. We've got everything there. We, we, we need to love each other. We need to understand who we are, where we come from. We need to accept each other because this thing of us being divided, because even coming from Africa to wherever, abroad, you find that you, you want to find your own people. And I, I think also it helps that uh, when you come here, you stop being a South African. Thank you. A, Zimbabwean, you yeah. become an African. Yeah. Even when you feel informed, it's black African, Absolutely. not black Zimbabwean. Exactly. Black. So, and also, we can learn a lot from each other because some we other can. Africans have had generations of their people coming here. Long so they before know us. Whereas, I feel like our generation of South Africans, we were like the guinea pigs because the people before us were here on exile. A lot of them, we yes. We like the real first group. Yes, yes, to, to, absolutely. To, come here, to, to travel, yeah. To travel, yeah. to leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that, that's true. That's why we, we, we had no one to look up to. Exactly. We had no one who'd made the mistakes, which is why it's so important for us uh, to have such platforms where we share our experiences so that people exactly. who come after us... They learn something. Also, another thing, um, you know, people assume when you're here, like we said earlier, you earn like 800 a w- pounds a week, People think that's a lot of money. Yes, it is when you convert it. Yes, it is. But people don't have money here. They have money, but they don't. 
cost they of live the cost of living is quite high you mm. know i mean your rent your food your bills everything you're left with nothing and, and then and then on top of that, people expect you to send money home. I was going to say that, that another thing is that we live two lives. By we, I mean most of us Africans, because we, you're, not just, you're earning one salary. That's enough for you to look after yourself. But then you're looking after 14 people back home. And a lot of us get to that phase where you want people at home to think you're doing well. You're doing better than you actually are doing. So you end up giving them a better lifestyle than the lifestyle you are living yourself. Exactly. And exactly. And you're living in a room and they're living in a beautiful house that you keep sending money to, keep sending money mm -hmm. home and you are sharing with five other people. But you want to give them that lifestyle you're not even living yourself. Mm -hmm. And you're yeah. doing a job that they would never they would do. Even oh if you God. offered them, they'd be like, I would never. I would never. Exactly. Exactly. But then again, but I, that is why I feel like it's very important for people here to be honest with their loved ones back home. You know, tell them that I, I can't afford it. You know, show them around. This is where I live, you know, because if you lie about where you live, like I, I used to, I joked ages ago, um, there was um, a fire. So something happened in um, in uh, Kensington. Was it Kensington? I can't remember. But then a lot of people were going on Facebook saying, I'm safe, I'm safe. As if they live there. I'm like, hold on. So when there was fire and then it was in a block of flats, nobody came and said, I'm safe. I'm like, guys, why can't you say you're safe now? Just because it was in a good area, you're saying I'm safe. I said, stop being hypocrites. Be yourself. There's nothing wrong living in a council flat. I, I had a friend who lived like in a shoebox. And every time her phone would ring, she'd be like, no, let it ring. And then when she answered, sorry, I was upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> people back home to think she was doing well. Oh my god, it's really it is pathetic. People need to be real. You need to show people who you are, why you're here. And then some families, okay, most families actually um are relying on someone being here. You know, so they have to send money home, but they need to know the struggle you're going through. Because if you're showing on Facebook, you're working six days a week or you're, you're working seven days and then that two days that you get, you go and, and wear your expensive clothes, you hire makeup artists, you send pictures home, people actually believe that's you. They don't know the real you. So when you are faking it, they think that's your life. They want it. They want that money. Do you know when I first came here, a friend of mine that uh, we were in acting with back home mm. told me she was working for the BBC. Wow. I was like, wow, my girl. My friend's going to hook me up. <laughs> I got here, she never answered my phone. Of course. And then... Months later, eventually uh, got to know where she actually lived oh. and what she actually worked as. Mm -hmm. She was in care. So I was like, don't be don't. embarrassed. It's, it's a job. It's okay. BBC. It's just that for you, it's British bank cleaners. <laughs> 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 but it's still the BBC. Okay, so she didn't lie. She didn't lie. She didn't lie. Okay, so you just assumed. I just assumed it was the British. Because, okay, hmm. broadcasting. Yeah. Oh, okay, we can give her that one. Yeah, assumptions, <laughs> assumption. But you know, another thing that I found here as a culture shock, mm -hmm. which we take for granted. And if you are planning to come here, please bring your hair products. Yeah, take advantage of having your hair done at home and do a hairstyle that's gonna last you six, seven months. Exactly, it's expensive to do hair exactly. here. Exactly especially for us black people. And it's also difficult. There are certain areas where you can get your hair done. But if you live outside those areas... Mm -hmm. And to find someone that you're going to be comfortable with because you can find someone who's really good, but maybe the way she's rough with you... Or maybe the language, because for me, it's very for me it's very important to be comfortable when I'm sitting down doing my hair. The cost of doing hair is too expensive. Some of them are carrying their babies on their backs. No, I, I can't. Okay, I do understand. Some people might say, okay, Cindy, they're trying to make a, a living. I get that, but then I'm not expecting to go to a salon, sit down, the baby's crying there, and the other one is, please take the baby. They are chewing gum. The, the other lady, oh my God, this lady, this is a true story. I have a natural hair like you. I had a, like, I've just cut my hair. But because I hate going to the salon, like you said, it's very difficult and it's expensive. 
So I realized it was going to be summertime. I wanted my hair out, so I went to the salon. It was packed. So this other lady recommended another lady who, lives, who works just up the road. I went there. Send you, I'm not lying. The girl, and you know when you have natural hair, how painful that is. She was on the phone doing a uh, FaceTime with her boyfriend in Jamaica no. when she was combing my hair. No. The pain. I told her to stop. She's. This is me here. The, the phone is here. She's just doing this, blow drying my hair. She's no. talking. The pain, because my scalp is very sensitive, you know, and I forced myself it's to... It's because they know that uh, it's hard to get someone who can oh, do our hair. that was horrible. So they do take advantage of us. And they, they, Bad experience for me. The cost is just too much. Too much. I told it to, to leave me alone. Like, you, you like. ask yourself, do I uh, help my uncle to pay the right price or do I do great? <laughs> Because <laughs> it costs the same. Exactly, because it, that's another, actually, another culture shock. Because when we were growing up, if somebody does your hair, it was always for free. You're not expected to pay, you know? But then everything, like, oh, you have to pay for this. You pay for babysitting. You pay for this. You pay for everything. You pay for absolutely everything. Everything, you know? It's what is babysitting? Like, it's not a big deal. Like, yeah, people make sure that they get paid. Uh, some people pay, pay to have a friend. There are people whose job is literally to just take people out for coffee. Exactly. They, they, they get paid. Exactly. If you want to go to the cinema, pay me, mm. you know? So, yes. Yeah, I think, that, oh, no, there's no way we're not going to talk about the food and how they do not season the food. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, that one is a shocker. That is a shock. First of all, I was shocked that you can actually eat inside the pub. I didn't know that. <laughs> I thought it was just for alcohol mm. only. But they do make their food there. And um, I don't know. I don't want to say much about that. But uh, for me, nah, I don't like that food. And most of the time, it's fish and chips. It's actually true. The only thing I appreciate about the food here is, especially when it comes to vegetables, you get to actually oh, taste yes, yes. what it's supposed to taste like. Because yes. sometimes we season too much, we put too much spices. Yeah. Peas yeah. ended up uh, tasting like beef. Yeah, it's yeah. Beef, a lot. Lorals. It's rich. Yeah, yeah, it's very rich. The, out there, definitely, because... And I realized that our food also can have a lot of salt. Yes, a like lot of, we, yeah. We, 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 we need, yeah, we, we, our food is nice, but not always healthy. Not all the time, yeah, exactly. So I was I mean, telling them at home when it was my aunt's funeral... Uh, she had died of diabetes. I was like, mm. then why are you feeding us food that's going to give us diabetes? Exactly. You want us to follow her. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's absolutely true. Yeah. So especially with food, it's, I mean, you're very conscious when you're abroad what you're eating, you know, because back home anything goes, you know, like anything goes. But here, yeah, you know. If you, you want know. food from home, be prepared to pay. Oh, yes, definitely. Definitely. If you want just a can of Spa letter, mm -hmm. you pay a lot. Just a small can. Knickknacks. Knickknacks, yes. Vors, you pay. You pay a lot. You yeah. pay a lot of money. And I think that's it for me. Do you have anything else? Oh, no, no, no. I think we've covered everything. Um, it was amazing. Yeah. And please do make sure that you do share your culture shocks. And uh, let us hear your story. Let us, yeah, let us share. Let us hear what's where your culture shocks when you first moved abroad? Let us know where do you live? Where did you? Which African country did you move from? How long have you been there? Would you recommend people to come to the country where you are living abroad? Absolutely. So on that note, guys, we want to say thank you so much for your support. Please share to your friends, friends of friends. Everybody would really appreciate that. And I hope you enjoyed the show as much as we have. And it does help us a lot when you like and comment because it lets us know that you are watching or listening to the podcast. And it's also very important for us if you can tell us what else you would like us to talk about on this podcast, Africans Living, Living Abroad, Abroad with Tenjiwe and Msindos. Thanks, Thank guys. So much. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.